Thinking about pornography. Is it the same as watching pornography? I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Let me tell you what the difference is, what the similarities are, and what you're going for, what the goal is instead. So in this video, we're going to talk about three things. Number one, what happens to your brain when you watch pornography? Number two, what happens in your brain when you think about pornography? And number three, what happens in your brain when you have healthy sexuality with a human being? Okay, so let's go. Number one, what happens in your brain when you watch pornography? If you've seen any of my other videos where I talk about pornography as a super normal stimulus, and if you haven't seen them, go check them out because there's more detail there, you will know that what I mean by super normal stimulus is that when you watch pornography on a screen, being a third party beyond the fourth wall, you are conditioning your brain to want and need to achieve a larger than normal neurochemical dump of pleasure chemicals and pain aversion chemicals in your brain. So what are you doing? You're self-medicating. Basically, you're trying to get the neurochemicals raging in your brain so that you no longer are experiencing the pain of your real life and you seemingly are getting a little bit of pleasure for a little bit of time. But if you go back with any frequency, consistency, intensity especially, and if you've been doing it for weeks, months, or years, what happens in your brain is that your brain needs to go back for more or it will not feel okay in your actual life. So that is what happens with the super normal stimulus of watching porn. Now, what happens when you are thinking about porn? When you're thinking about porn, the exact same thing happens, but not to as large of a degree because you don't have the visual and auditory stimulation that you would be getting from the screen. So now it's mental imagery or fantasy. But if you ask me, that is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous over the long haul than going back for more porn. And I'll tell you why, because in this reboot journey and we're trying to reboot our routines and habits and get away from the screen, if now you internalize that and you no longer need the screen and you're using mental fantasy and imagery, you can basically do that anywhere all the time. Even though it's going to be at lower neurochemical levels, what you're going to be doing is giving your brain a drip of those chemicals all the time or more frequently. So when you are coupled to the screen and you're actually watching porn, you're getting a dump in your brain. When you're thinking about it, and especially if you build a new habit of thinking about it more often, more frequently, and you still are, you know, you're running the reels of what you've seen, so at the same level of intensity, this frequency and consistency at lower levels, the drip more frequently can be more harmful to you over the long haul. So like if you've seen in the comments, and please comment if you have a question or a comment. I read them all, I do, I respond to all of them. Even if it's a heart or a thumbs up, I read them all and I respond. But someone wrote, you know, I every day, six times a day for 15 minutes, I'm going back to porn in the screen. You're giving your brain a dump six times a day. So now if you start running the imagery and the fantasy in your mind 20 times a day, you're giving your brain a drip 20 times a day. The goal, this is number three, what's the goal? The goal is not to need the fantasy at all. Come out of the fantasy, get back into real life. Couple your brain to an actual human being and retrain your brain to want and desire and need normal levels of the stimulus. And normal can be good. I know it'll be different because you're used to super normal levels, but once you train your brain in the right direction, now you want to couple yourself to your partner if you have one. If you don't have a partner, you need to train your brain and get in a better spot so that your energy becomes attractive and you can attract someone to you. And they will be attracted to you because they'll know you're attracted to them. 
When you are coupled to a screen, it's difficult to be attracted to human beings. Science proves that. So the goal is to train your brain to want normal le levels of the neurochemical stimuli so that your brain can feel good in the real world coupled to a human being. And the way that you do that, if you don't have a partner, is to mentally think about what it would be like to be with that human being that you are attracted to in a way of connection. And what we're going for in healthy sexuality is relational sex, not objectified sex that you find in pornography where, you know, the people on the screen are just objects being used by each other. Don't even get me started on that one, but we'll just go with that for right now. Being used by each other just for pleasure. So when we switch that to relational sex, now it's people being together for pleasure, connection, and happiness. And happiness is totally different than pleasure. There's actually a quintessential study that describes the neurochemical difference between the two. And so what you're going for is some pleasure, connection, and happiness, which is not at all what you're getting in pornography, and it's not what you're getting if you're running fantasy and imagery. Okay, I hope that helps you out. If you're getting value from these videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, it only helps the both of us. And if you're looking for help in this recovery journey, rebooting your brain and getting out there so you can get, perp get on purpose in your life, in your job or your work, in your play or your hobbies and in your relationships, please reach out to me, Trish at drtrishlee.com or visit my website at drtrishlee.com because I'm here for you. I got your back. Okay, and remember, control your brain or it'll control you.